Welcome back guys to the channel Talk Automotive, the channel from the car lover to car lovers. Today in the episode we are, well, this shows we have a workbench with tools and then we have the R53 sat here. Um, so we managed to remove rib bumper, exhaust, side skirts um, and now we're going to work on getting this uh, rear sub frame out um, and taking it to get powder coated so let's get to it. So guys, really sorry, the GoPro's memory card has had an error and all of the footage of us taking the rear subframe out and the fuel tank has gone, um, which is gutting and I'm really, really sorry about. If you need any information on how to drop the rear subframe or remove the fuel tank, please check out Hyphen's Classics. Um, he's got really detailed videos and does it step by step and a lot better than I've done. So uh, yeah, check him out. We have been doing work. So let me show you what we've done so far. Apologies for the lighting, but it's the best I can do. Um, so we have taken the entire rear subframe out, as you can see. Um, just about to drop the fuel box, take out the uh, handbrake lines and obviously take back the, the positive line. Um, obviously we've, uh, Taking all this out under here, which is great. Keep your hand at this, you can see. Um, the battery box will be coming out, so I'm gonna cut that out. Um, and then we'll weld the flat plate in there. I'm gonna drop the fuel tanks we can get under, um, and then we can start cleaning the entire, uh, we can start cleaning the entire under of the, the under bay of this rear side, um, and, uh, and get to paint. Um, <clears throat> in terms of what the condition things are like, well, this is the rear subframe which is, as you can see, just <coughs> completely rusted, which is no good for anyone. Um, and then if I take you around on the back here, this is all the components. So again, you can see the exhaust isn't in too bad condition, but you know, quite badly rusted. Um, and then, the, yeah, look, these are the original real tra rear trailer arms. Just look at those, like, horrific. A re a re original springs, this bolt completely fused, we've had breaker bars, impact guns, wrenches, the lot on it, nothing. The old rear brakes, completely shot, look at that. Look at that piston, just completely done. And they, these are the original control arms. Um, all of the heat shield has come out because, well, that's why it just literally disintegrated. So we've got a lot of work to do, um, so let's get stuck in. So, as you can see, the fuel tank is out, which is great. Um, that's the condition of it. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy, isn't it? You wouldn't think that was underneath the car. But that is all the rubbish that the wheels kick up off the road. Absolutely crazy. So, I'm gonna seal up the pipes like I've done there. Um, and then I'll give that a really good clean before it goes back on, but that won't be going on for a bit, so I can wait. Um, next job, remove the brake lines, which are here. Um, take them back, as you can see, they're completely corroded. And we did a bulkhead brake line system to, to stop that happening in the future. Um, need to just take the breather pipe out, which is that long one there, goes through to the other side, so I'll take all that out. Um, tie up the, the fuel lines further down, um, get all the plastic clips off, take some pictures so that we know where everything goes, but take all those plastic, plastic clips off um, and then we can get sanding all this down um, with, the, right. with the angle grinder and disc um, and get this ready for, for paint. So there's nothing more boring than watching a time lapse that goes on and on and on, but uh, here are some key components of what's going on. Obviously, if you need a more in-depth view of what's happening, please check out other people's YouTube channels as they're qualified mechanics or have a lot more experience than I do. Um, so here I'm just removing the breather hose pipe um, into the breather. This is in the rear driver's side arch. Um, that just needs to come out with 110mm and then that pops out comes out fairly easy and then Jubilee clips of, of course are, are everywhere so you have to undo those. Um, I then removed that, that pipe, got rid of that and that needs cleaning because you can see there by the breather that's on the floor how, how dirty it is. Um, but, but again I've, I've cleaned all that up now. Uh, then starting to remove the breather hose pipe work and the fuel pipe work. Um, and then here is where I fought with the handbrake cable. So it was that rusted that it actually fused to the metal work and you can see by the state of the underneath of this car how bad the rust is um, and again 
later on in the video I'll just show you how bad it is because um, yeah it's, it's something that, that I've never even considered uh, being possible on the underneath of the car. Obviously then we got to moving and re removing the brake lines. Um, again, brake lines are notorious on the R53 for corrosion um, and this was no different. The lines to the rear brake calipers were nearly completely dissolved um, and uh, yeah, there wasn't really much uh, actual brake line left. So uh, yeah, there was leaks happening all over the place and, and definitely there would have been some, uh, some air leaks in those, in those brake lines. So just went to remove the, uh, just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room to try and get these out there with the um, front subframe. Uh, just undid a couple of bolts, just hoping it was going to uh, allow me some more space, but it didn't really make any difference. So you don't need to actually do this. Uh, I then got uh, two spanners. So it's a 15 mil and an 11 mil spanner um, that you work in, in a, 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 a together sort of scissor motion in order to undo the uh, brake lines. So as you see, I got under here and thought, right, I'll get going to that. And uh, it just wasn't budging really. Um, therefore, I got the WD-40 out. Um, because that's what we all do, isn't it? When we can't get anything to undo itself. You can see my puzzled face there. I'm like, please undo, please undo. And I'm thinking, Henry, remember the WD-40. And again, this really didn't make any uh, difference whatsoever. I actually thought it was moving, um, but it was actually just my spanner was just dissolving the, the bolt. So I did what any uh, true man right, does in a it's... time where they can't get something to undo. And I went and got the angle grinder. Uh, and just grinded these off. I don't need these. I'm going to be replacing them with a full race kit anyway. The bulkhead. So I thought I don't need them and it's wasting my time trying to get them undone. I don't know how some garages do get these things undone. Um, these are really tight actually, the clips. So get a big flat screwdriver or, or something like that and, and uh, just leave them out of the, hole, out of the grips and then, uh, and then slide them out. And that's what we did. Well, yeah. That sums up how horrible that job was. Um, as you just seen on the time lapse, let me get you under here. Oh, yeah. As you seen on the time lapse, there we've taken um, the fuel lines and the brake lines completely out, so they're now gone. We'll actually be reusing them so those clips can come out, and then all the undercarriage can be cleaned. Um, you can see there we had quite a lot of brake fluid leak, but if you look at the state, just try and show you that all that rust we've got some sanded to do so I'm gonna get some pictures again of all these clips um, pop them all out that's a fuel line that I've wrapped up in I don't know how far I can drop it back without it uh, leaking fuel everywhere but again I don't want to be creating any sparks near that um, but I'll work that out remove these clips uh, those rubber grommets that you can see there and there they need to be put and then I can uh, go for that and then it's just a matter of getting it all prepped and uh, starting from the back to the front with uh, with grinding so uh, yeah you can see the extent of that rust there but well it looks like that now and it will look like that when we're finished um, which is a big positive. All the clips are now removed, all the metal work is ready and it's time to get grinding away this rust.
guys and uh, yeah it's a new day well to be honest with you it's been about a week so you know we had the rust under the car well I've never dealt with rust before uh, not to this extent anyway and it took me roughly between 20 and 24 hours of work in order to get rid of all the rust that's no joke I've gone through three packs of discs about six or seven floppy discs wire brushes the amount of vinegar because i saw that vinegar helps to get rid of rust it took forever so i thought i'm just going to stop filming because it's just boring just me grinding 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 away um since then things have uh, progressed which is great so i managed to get all of the rust off um and we've now rust encapsulated with uh, this great product actually from buzzworld uh, use three cans of that, that tells you how bad it was. So once you get it back to bare metal, obviously you don't want the rust to come back and I'm telling you now I'm never ever doing that again. Um, you need to encapsulate it and make sure it doesn't. So we've put the rust encapsulated down. Um, we've then, uh, next, and the stuff that I'm gonna film with you is we're putting the CIO, so this is chassis in one. Um, you can just put this straight down, but I, and a lot of people recommend a rust encapsulator, which is what I've done. Um, so we're going to paint it black with a CIO, just get that completely first coat done. And then down in my box of goodies down here, uh, which you can see it's got fuel and everything, um, is some, where am I, the spoke cans. Here, war. So this is basically a really heavy duty paint that you use on the bottom of cars. So I mean, we've got it in the same blue as the car as well. Now the car's not staying blue, but I thought for the mean for the time being, let's uh, let's just line it up and it'll look really, really good. So we're gonna get this chassis in one on, let that dry, um, and then we'll get the war on. So um, yeah, sorry for the delay, even though you won't see it, but uh, it's one hell of a challenge and anyone who undertakes it, fair play to you, because uh, well, I look like this, so that tells you everything. Right, let's get to it. So as you saw then, got some of the CIO underway. Let's have a quick look and see what it looks like. So really happy with that and the way it's gone on. So that just completely seals the metal work um, on the car, allows us to, to paint from there. Obviously I know it's black and that means that the blue is going to be a dark color, but we don't, we don't really mind underneath. Um, but yeah, really happy with the way this is looking now compared to what it did look like. <clears throat> so, all the CIO done. Um, and now, let's get on to coating this with the, the war product. So we'll seal it in, give it lifetime cover, um, and also take it to a, a nice colour, not a deep dark black. But well happy with the way that this is all coming out so far.
and this is where we leave it for today guys what a transformation this is from that horrible rust bucket that you'll see now to this absolutely made up I'm happy with myself as well because obviously I've never done this before and I'm pretty happy with the way this has turned out I hope you are too. <laughs> Absolutely filthy. Well, thanks all so much for watching. Um, like you say, I'm not a mechanical expert, so I'm not going to talk you through how to do all these things. Just show you what we're doing on the R53 um, and, and post it out there. So in the next episode, we'll rebuild the rear subframe, uh, put the fuel tank in and get it in the car. Um, as always, guys, please like, subscribe and share because uh, my face looks like this. So that's got to be at least worth a like. And uh, until the next time, Peace.